Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Protoss strategy. Now in this strategy replay, our Protoss player is Crappy, and our Zerg opponent is Demaga. So again, this is a Protoss versus Zerg strategy. Uh, in particular, we're going to be looking at uh, just the 4 Warp Gate build, uh, another variation of the 4 Warp Gate build. We're going to be talking a little bit about timing uh, against Zerg players. So many Zerg players like to go for that fast expansion, and we're going to show why it can be really beneficial if you push out right away as soon as you see that uh, war Warp Gate research finished. Um, when you know that there is a fast expansion on the board. So starting off here with some pretty standard stuff by getting that 9 pylon, we are then of course going ahead and move our scout out. We do want to get into the Zerg player's base, see if we're going to be seeing any early aggression whatsoever. Um, six pools aren't very likely in the um, in the higher leagues. Not that they can't be effective, but the problem with stuff like six pools is that you really, if it fails, you're pretty much done. It's game over. So, I mean, you will see it every now and then, um, and I know you guys, especially in the mid to lower brackets, are going to see that often. So that is in particular why you do want to go ahead and move out uh, right after you're done dropping that first pylon. That's going to allow you to get to their base as quickly as possible. Um, and again, of course, you do have to consider the fact that if you do get six pool rushed um, on a four person map, there's a good chance you're not going to get there before they start moving their zerglings out. So you just do just want to be prepared for that. Um, now we did go ahead and drop down our gateway at 11 supply and we're going to be getting our simulator at 13. So again, we're going for that four warp gate build, that really standard, um, very strong build for Protoss players. Um, but again, what we're going to be looking at more in, in particular is pushing out when that warp gate research is finished right away against a zerg player who fast expands. Um, and again, that's pretty much normal for a lot of Zerg players because Zerg really needs that economy and that extra production of larva to stay competitive um, and stay on par with a lot of other races that go for that one base play. Um, Zerg, I'm sorry, Terran and Protoss can definitely work off one base play for quite some time before they really have to expand. Um, and that's kind of the the thing you can take advantage of as those races against Zerg players. So we're just moving our scout around again. We do know where they are at this point, of course. Um, we did see that spawning pool and that extractor. Um, seeing that the extractor's up before the spawning pool, we can expect that there might be some speedlings on the board pretty quickly. Um, this is going to be something that's going to make us stay a little passive early in the game. Not going to be moving out right away with Zealots, not going to be doing any 2 gate pressure. Again, we are going for that 4 gate build. That Cybernex core is down right now. We did drop that at 15 supply, and it has just finished now at around 20 supply. Second that comes up, you do of course want to start researching that warp gate tech. Uh, we are going to be going for that as, as basically as quick as possible to get that warp gate research up again because it's just so strong. It's um, such a strong ability to have. Uh, we do want to get that up as quickly as possible, uh, saving Chrono Boost for it whenever we can, um, and then obviously just continuously producing probes in the meantime. Now we do have our scouting probe out here, and you may be wondering, well, what is it doing? Why hasn't it returned to our base, or why isn't it in his base? Basically, we're kind of pulling it, holding it back right now. Um, in going for this 4-gate build, we are, of course, planning on dropping some proxy pylons near his base for when we do push. So having this probe out here is going to be something that's going to allow us to do that without having to pull anything from our base, from our uh, from our mineral line over here. We can just use this probe that we've already moved out. This is also going to allow us to push back in for some secondary scouting information to see if that fast expansion is indeed up. Um, we have dropped our three additional gateways. Uh, as far as supply is concerned, we dropped those. These two at 25 supply and this one at 26 supply. Uh, what that's going to allow us to do is, as soon as this warp gate research is done, we're going to be able to get those warp gates in almost immediately. Dropping our first proxy pylon right here, and we're going to be dropping a second one a little bit closer. Uh, again, leapfrog leapfrogging these pylons um, when you're pushing out is a very good idea because if they do c happen to kill one of them, for example, the next one that we drop here, if they happen to destroy that, then we at least have this backup one. Um, instead of having to rely on only warping in units at our base, we can still stay offensive by warping in by this backup one and then pushing forward. So here's that first one, and again, if they destroyed that, we do have this... Um, secondary one there. So we do see this fast expansion right now. Um, that's going to tell us that now is a pretty good time to push out. We do also see this layer tech right here, so we do have to be worried. In fact, there is a hydralis den going down right now. We did see that as we moved in. So now is definitely going to be a good time to push. Um, again, we saw that fast expansion. We saw that fast tech. If we let that sit for too long, they're really going to be in a very strong position. So we do need to push out and try to do as much damage as possible. At the very least, we want to try to disrupt the economy coming from this natural expansion. 
I started off by warping in a bunch of zealots. Again, be moving forward and doing as much damage as we can. Taking out the spine crawler, of course, is very important. You don't want him to just be continuously picking at your zealots. Um, luckily, zealots do really good damage, uh, so <laughs> it doesn't take very long for these spine crawlers to drop. Uh, this queen, of course, is going to be your next uh, primary target. Now, again, this is what, what I was talking about. If we let them sit for too long, they're really going to start being in a great position uh, against us. Again, he had that hydralist hydralis den uh, upgrading, and uh, he has these hydralis out now. Hydralis do a lot of damage to gateway units, especially on creep. It's very hard for us to catch them, um, so it's going to be very difficult. So we do need to keep this aggression up. We do need to do as much damage as possible. Try to take out this hatchery. We have already disrupted the economy, uh, so that is of course good. They're not getting as much economy as they would otherwise be getting. But again, it's dang so dangerous for us these hydralis. They just do so much damage to gateway units. I mean, as you can see. We're pushing forward with this early aggression. You can only imagine if we let them sit for too much longer how large of a hydralisk army they could have and how uh, devastating it could be to us. So we are going to keep up this aggression right now. Um, basically all we're doing at this point is microing our units, trying to keep them alive, and then warping in backup units as well. Um, another good thing to note, as you saw there, as I was moused over those warping in zealots, when you have units warping in, if you select them, you can right-click somewhere on the map and they will automatically go to that spot. It's kind of like rallying a building. Um, in any other case, like you can click on a building and rally it to a certain location. Well, with the warped in units, while they're warping in, you can rally them to a certain spot. As you can see, he rallied them over here. Second they move in, they move right over without him having to do additional commands. So we were able to finally take out those hatchery. You do want to avoid these broodlings as they do a lot of damage, especially with those <coughs> hydralis moving forward to add to the pressure. Um, and we're just going to try to mount up a little bit of a force and then push in. Again, we all have already accomplished something very great by taking out this hatchery, um, but we do want to see how much more damage we can do. They're going to be a little bit behind because they put so much, so many resources into that hatchery and the drones that were there. So as long as we keep up the pressure, we should do a pretty good job. Um, it's going to be about proper micro, though. You do want to make sure that you don't get caught in a bad position and don't let them get a surround on you with Zerglings or Hydralis from behind and in front. That would be very bad. Um, so we're able to just push up, keep this pressure going, and it's going to be too much for the Zerg player to handle. Um, as you can see, there's not too much more he can do. Uh, and, it, and basically, the real key to that was taking out that expansion because it did stop the larva production, so he wasn't able to produce as many units, um, and thusly, he wasn't able to fend off that attack. And again, keeping up the pressure, keep things rallied into his base while you warp them in, and this can be a very effective strategy. So again, guys, looked at that four warp gate Protoss build. A uh, pretty standard thing for Protoss, but very strong. Something you guys should definitely learn how to master if Protoss is a favorite race of yours. Um, once you kind of mastered that four warp gate build, you can work into different variations, uh, different alterations of that build, maybe even looking to two gate robo builds and stuff like that. But four gate, really basic, really strong, something you guys should all learn. So we started off with that nine pylon, followed up with a 11 gateway. Uh, then we got that 13 assimilator, uh, 15 we got that cybernex core. Now 21 we started researching that warp gate research and then we of course started chrono boosting that because again we do want that warp gate research as quickly as possible. And then at 25, 25 and 26 we got our additional warp gates adding up to four total. Uh, as soon as that warp gate research finished we did of course turn those into warp gates from gateways. And then you know we moved in, we got that scouting information, we saw that fast expansion, we saw that layer tech and we saw that hydralis down was coming in. That tells us you know if you see something like that, if you see that they have that economy advantage from an expansion, and if you see that they're, they're going to be having that tech advantage shortly by moving up to layer and hydralis, you do need to push out right then. Um, because if you wait too much longer, they're just going to have a huge advantage. They're going to be able to mass up a huge army. And working off of one base, you're not going to be able to do much to defend against it. You would almost be forced at that point to tech up and get either Colossi or um, High Templar. And if you don't, and they push out, working off these two bases, that economy, and pumping out Hydralis, you're going to die. There's not too much you're going to be able to do about it. So yeah, guys, again, this has been four StarCraft II strategy. We did look at that four-gate build and pressure against an expanding Zerg and when to properly move out. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel, guys. Keep watching and keep owning. Taking advantage again of this proxy pylon here and warping into the back of his base. Uh, and then once, you know, you can push out at this point, and then as soon as you're capable, as soon as that second wave of units is able to be warped in, you want to do that immediately. And at that point, you should have a stronger force than your opponent. See, as you can see.